Hey y'all, it's Terrilla from YokiBee.com. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. I hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday season so far. I wanted to bring you a couple of projects that you could make during this time and possibly even use them for gifts. And as a bonus, you could maybe use up some of your scrap yarn. So first up is this super cute crochet I-cord wreath. <laughs> To get started, you will need eight yards of two inch fabric strips, eight yards of crochet cord, wire for your letters. I'm using 24 gauge, but you can use a different gauge if you need to. 10 millimeter crochet hook, 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, five different colors of scrap yarn, a branch or bar for hanging, an 88 millimeter pom pom maker, monofilament fishing line, and some kind of thread or yarn for hanging your wreath. You will also need a tapestry needle. So to get started, you will grab your fabric and a tape measure or ruler. You will measure two inches from the edge of your fabric. You're going to have the shortest side facing you horizontally so that the longest side is vertical because you're gonna be tearing these into strips. You want the strips to be as long as possible without any transitions. Now you're gonna need about eight yards of this. So depending on how many yards of fabric you have, you might have to tie it together or sew it together. I do have a fabric yarn tutorial. If you want to check that out before doing this, I will put that up here. In that tutorial, I show you how to attach your fabric strips to make yarn in a couple of different ways, and you can kind of decide which way you like best. I really love the raw edges of this. I think it really adds to the character of the wreath. So we will cut about an inch deep right here because we're gonna be tearing the strip. Once you have measured two inches and an inch from the edge here, You'll grab your scissors and cut. As you can see, there's just a little cut here and you will tear your strip the rest of the way. It should tear evenly all the way down. Once you have your two inch fabric strip, you will grab your 10 millimeter crochet hook and we are going to make a 15 inch I cord. So it might be a little awkward at first using this crochet hook because it is kind of small for this large bulky fabric, but you want that to be the case so that it forms a nice solid wreath. So if you've never made an I-cord before, I do have a video for that. I will put that up here. I'll just go over it really quickly though to show you it's super easy. We will chain three. It might be a little awkward at first just holding this bulky fabric, but you'll get the hang of it after a couple of times. So after you have chain three, you will insert your hook in the second chain from the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert your hook in the third chain from the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, And now you have three loops on your hook. You'll take the first two loops off and hold on to them. Yarn over and pull through that first chain. Insert your hook in the second loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert your hook in the third chain yarn over and pull up a loop. And you'll just repeat those steps for the entire 15 inches of your I-cord. And I will meet you back there. Once you've reached your 15 inches of I-cord, you will insert your hook in the last loop, yarn over, Pull that loop through and then you will continue to pull that same loop through the other two loops on your hook. And 
just pull that yarn all the way through. Now you're ready to join your I cord into a wreath shape. So we'll take one of the tails from one side, grab your tapestry needle, thread the tapestry needle. It might be a little awkward just because the fabric is so thick. Just make sure you have a big enough needle to where you can get it through. And then you will insert this yarn tail into a hole from the I cord on the end and bring it together. And then you'll take the other side we'll just we'll just trim this so that it will be easier to weave through. Thread the other side through the tapestry needle insert into the I cord. And pull it through. Make sure you pull it tightly so that it forms a nice circle. Another thing that you could do with your wreath if you wanted to, I'm not doing it with this one, but you could make your tails long enough and create a bow at the top if you wanted to. Make sure these are tight. Secure them with a knot. And then you will weave these ends into your eye cord. Now I did want to point out, here is one of the transitions I had from joining my fabric strips. So we'll also tuck that in. This will be against the wall so you won't see it. And you can also sew it as I showed in my fabric yarn tutorial, but I just decided to tie a knot since you're not going to be seeing it anyway. And then I will weave in the ends and then we'll be ready to make our letters. Now you're going to grab your wire, crochet thread, and 3.5 millimeter hook. I'm using 24 gauge wire, but you can use a thicker wire if you want. That might even work better. This is just what I had on hand. You're also going to need about eight yards of crochet cord, depending on what word you are spelling. I'm going to be spelling Mary, so eight yards is about what I need for that. I'm going to cut a piece of wire about 40 inches long. Now, depending on what word you want to spell, you will need either a longer or shorter amount of wire. If your wire is thin enough like mine, you can just use scissors. I'm actually going to use needle nose pliers to trim it. Now grab your crochet hook and make a slip knot with your crochet cord. Now, if you want your stitches to be tighter, you can use a smaller crochet hook than 3.5. This is just the one that I'm using. Insert your hook. Make sure you're starting from the short edge so that you are crocheting to the left as you normally would. And then you will chain one around the wire. And then you will begin making single crochets all across the wire. Try not to get it twisted. At first it might be a little awkward because it's not very sturdy, but then once you make several stitches, it will get sturdier. And you'll just single crochet all the way around the wire. And I will meet you back at the end. Now I do suggest folding your wire over right here at the end just so that it doesn't come off of your wire. Make sure that you don't squish your crochet cord. Just to hold it in place there. Now one thing to remember is you don't need to worry if your crochet cord gets all bunched up because you can always spread it out later on the wire. When you have your word all ready and formed, you can just spread out your stitches. So don't worry if they get bunched. And honestly, it might even be easier as you go to have them bunched so they don't slide around too much. Once 
once you're getting closer to the end of the wire, you can kind of stretch your stitches out just to see how far you've reached on the wire. I like to leave about 10 inches of extra wire because you can always take it away at the end if you don't need it. So you can kind of straighten out your stitches. And now you're ready to start forming your word. So when you're starting your letters, you want your beginning chain to be here on the left so that you work all the letters this way towards the right. And then do not pull this all the way through on your last single crochet because you may need to add some or take some away. So just make sure you pull it out a little bit so it doesn't come undone, but do not pull it all the way through. Make sure all of your stitches are lined up properly. And then you can start your word. I'm gonna be doing Mary, so you can kind of just play around with it. If you wanna look up some fonts to see if there's a particular one that you want to do, you can do that too to kind of give you a guide. But I'm just gonna kind of freestyle it. Now I do want to point out that you don't want to bend your wire too much. If you're playing around with it, you want to kind of just gently bend it so that it doesn't have too many creases in it because it might lay funny if you do that. So just keep that in mind as you're making your letters. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with the way my letters look, so I will go ahead and fasten off my yarn. And then I will also trim my wire, leaving enough to bend it over and secure the thread. You can always cut more off at the end if you need to. And then you can weave that wire into these stitches so you won't see it. And the same goes for your ends. You can use your tapestry needle. You will need a thinner tapestry needle probably to weave it into the stitches so that you won't see it. And next we will attach it to our wreath. You are now ready to attach your letters to your wreath. So go ahead and grab your monofilament fishing line, your scissors, and your letters. You want to grab a long enough piece of monofilament to attach your letters to your wreath. So just make it long enough so you can tie a knot in it comfortably and then cut it and decide where you want your letters to go on your wreath. If you want them off to the side or if you want them on the top, you can kind of play around with it and see what works best for you. And once you've decided on your placement of your letters, you're going to weave your monofilament through a stitch on your I-cord. You will bring it through to the front and you will tie a knot. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then we will trim it. And you will shift it around so that the knot is on the inside of the I cord so that you don't see it. And you'll secure your letters in the same way in as many areas as you think needs it. I might secure it in a couple more areas just to make sure that it doesn't move, but whatever looks good to you. Once you're done attaching your letters, we're ready to add our pom-poms. I ended up attaching it in four different places, both ends and then a couple of other spots here, just to make sure that it was nice and secure. So let's make some pom-poms. To make your pom-poms, you're gonna need your 88 millimeter pom-pom maker and three of your five scrap yarn colors and some scissors. Go ahead and grab your pom-pom maker. And to get started, We'll begin wrapping your yarn on one side. I like to wrap my yarn five times for a total of five times on each side. 
So for this first time around, I'll make sure that there are no gaps in my yarn. You can kind of go quickly and then move the yarn down on your pom-pom maker. That kind of makes it go faster. And then on your second through fifth rounds, if you decide to make that size of a pom-pom, it will be okay if your wraps aren't right next to each other. Okay, now round two. Just kind of make it steady. Three, four, and five. Okay, and once you've reached the end, you will go ahead and close that and trim your yarn. And you will do the same thing for the other side. Once you have both sides wrapped, you will trim. Go ahead and make a string long enough to tie around your pom-pom. Just make sure, I like to wiggle it just to make sure that it's all the way in there and then you will tie it to secure. Tie it as tight as you can without breaking the yarn. And these strands right here are what you will use to attach your three pom-poms together. Go ahead and start trimming your pom-pom to your desired size. And I'll meet you back when they're all trimmed. Now that you've got all your pom-poms trimmed, you are ready to join them together to form your cluster. So you'll just grab all of your tails and tie them together in a tight knot. You want to make sure the knot is tight because you don't want them to where they're kind of floppy. You want them to be nice and solid. And then once you attach them to your wreath, you can kind of play around with which ones you want to go where. So let's attach them to a wreath. I'm going to trim my ends so that they're all the same length. Grab your tapestry needle and you will divide your yarn strands into even sections. Go ahead and thread your tapestry needle with one of the sections. And then depending on where you want your pom-poms to go, you're going to insert underneath a stitch from your I-cord. Bring the yarn to the back. And then you will tie it in a knot to secure. and then you can weave these ends into the inside of your I-cord. So now you're ready to attach your wreath to your hanging bar. I've cut strands of five different colors of yarn. You can do however many colors you want. You can make it all one color, three colors, whatever you want. I made these about 16 to 17 inches. You just want them to be long enough so that they're easy to tie. Grab your tapestry needle and you'll weave all these into your tapestry needle. And then you will insert your tapestry needle into the center of your wreath underneath a stitch, possibly even where you tied both sides of your cord together. 
pull it through halfway, and then tie the top in a knot. Make sure all your threads are through. Now you will be able to hang it on your bar. Now you can either trim this and just have the ends at the top, or if you want to, you can hide the knot. If you wanna hide your knot, you will just bring it down to where your wreath is. And you can hang it this way. So now let's hang our wreath. So grab whatever it is you want to hang your bar or branch with. I'm using this cord I had from Target, but you can use monofilament fishing line if you don't want to see it. You could use yarn or wire. You can just choose whatever works best for you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more patterns and tutorials like this one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!